dollars in bonus bets instantly only at DraftKings Sportsbook. One of the crazier topics we have heard this week is that the Eagles should sit all their starters and prepare for the playoffs, basically handing the Cowboys the division. Never underestimate the Dallas Cowboys' ability to choke. Never hand them anything. The fudge? Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's go open for business and let's wake up those football gods. Wow. It's been a long night. It's been a rough night. And let me say shout out to everybody who watched the live stream of the meats cooking of the meats cooking because we started it out. And I apologize that the camera lost the signal for about an hour or so in between me taking naps. But every two hours I was up putting more wood in, checking it, make sure I got plenty in the, uh, the, the uh, wash pan. I mean, the, the you know, the, the, the drip pan or whatever you want to call it. Make sure that that was full of apple cider and making sure that the meats are good. I've already got six of them done and meat pulled on that. So if you're coming to the tailgate, the meats will be there. Speaking of the meats, I got to talk about the meathead here, Philly 500. You know, <laughs> you listen to Philly 500 says, never underestimate the power of the Dallas Cowboys choking. Pot meat kettle. You should have won the Super Bowl last year, but you choked. You choked. I think you guys had a 10 to 1 record when I think we were 7 and 4. Or was it 7 and 3? You had a stranglehold on the number one seed, Philly. The number one seed. And you choked you are sitting at the fifth seed and the only way you get it is you've got to beat the lowly new york giants and the cowboys have to lose to the lowly washington commanders when this thing should have been over and you should have literally been resting players this week with a bye week after this calling the cowboys choking after what you guys did oh come on philly and I'm going to say, you know, I ain't seen very many Eagle fans until last night. I'm sitting here looking at the chat, you know, went out, put some, you know, wood in the, the smoker and get the thing smoking so the meats will be all smoky and ready to go. And I'm looking at all these Eagle fans, you know, Philadelphia, Philly D and some other ones and all that. Cowboys going to lose the first round. They suck. Dak sucks. You know, Jalen. What? What? Ain't seen you guys all week. And I realize what it is. Cockroaches come out when it's dark outside. Because by 5 a.m., they were gone. They were gone. And I'm going to say Philly 500. <laughs> Son, I thought I brought you better to be. I thought I brought you up to be a man. That you handle your own business, okay? Never ask a man to do what you're not willing to do because Philly, you, you were literally, literally all over me when your team was winning the division, when your team was up, when your team went to the Super Bowl, you were the one that was constantly text messaging me pictures of Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis and talking about big play stay and, and how N'Kobe Dean was going to be, you know, all pro and lead the team in tackles, how Nick Sariani is the greatest coach of all time that, you know, how he vision, you know, was the greatest thing going and that, you know, we just sucked. We don't have a chance. And now I don't hear from you. I end up hearing from other people telling me that cop pizzle is so desperate for that belt he's hoping that they get a win and i hope they do get a win i would actually like to see cop pizzle happy 
in your misery. But the fact that you said the bet between you and him is he's going to be your lap dog to attack me. Uh, I don't mean any harm, Philly, but sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. There ain't nothing Kyle Pizzle can say about me or the Cowboys. We own that ass. The last time they beat Dak Prescott, Eli, Eli Manning, who is actually eligible now for, I believe, uh, 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 to get in the Hall of Fame, was still a quarterback. 2016. Philly. Come on now. You can do better than that, bro. All right, so I got lots to do today because we got the tailgate tomorrow. Um, we'll be in Red Zone Lot. The great thing about Red Zone Lot is uh, come in off of Sheriff Road, okay? There's a back way that's in there, the only way that you can get there. But that lot opens up an hour ahead of the other one. So we'll be leaving here at like 10 in the morning, so that way we're there you know, before the gates open, before all the traffic gets there, we'll be setting up and getting ready to go. The weather temperature looks like it's going to be 47 and sunny with, uh, I think, uh, 5 to 15 or 5 to 10 mile an hour winds in there. So it won't be a bad day. Just dress warm. Make sure you wear, you know, a couple of layers of things because it will be, you know, you'll be here from 12 o'clock and all that outside, although we do have the concourse. The good thing about having the club level tickets is there is the indoor. You don't have to be sitting out there in the cold worrying about sewage dropping on your head like you do up underneath of it. Now, I saw something this morning. You know, when I got up, okay, I understand. I literally... 12 o'clock, I'm putting wood in. 2 o'clock, I'm putting wood in. Uh, 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning, putting wood in. 7 o'clock. I, I literally, I'm, I'm laying on the couch and I'm sleeping for about an hour. And you're laying there. And, and the craziest thing, oh my God. You know, I'm laying there on the couch. I'm tired. And we have one of those, you know, rambas, right? Earlier in the night, I stumped my toe. I kicked the damn thing. And my big toe hurts right now. I'm laying there on the couch trying to sleep. And I hear, please charge Ramba. I'm like, what? And I'm like, F that damn Ramba. About a minute later, I hear, please charge Ramba. I'm like, listen, this motherfucker. I said, this ain't going to keep doing it. It kept doing it, but each time, it got shorter in between. Because I, you know, I have to say, uh, then it was like 30 seconds. Please char charge Ramba. But this time I'm getting pissed. Next time it's like 15 seconds later. Please charge Ramba. It got to the point, please charge Ramba. Please charge. I had to get up off the couch and put the damn thing in the charge point. You know, the damn thing is supposed to be smart. You, you, you're six inches away from your charge point. C couldn't you just activate yourself and put yourself back on there like you normally do? You had to get me up off the floor. You just had to get me up. So I'm a little hangry here this morning. So I'm outside this morning, you know, and I'm pulling some of the meats. If you watch my morning video, you'll see me pulling out some of that delicious pulled pork. I know pulled pork is not everybody saying, and that's fine. If you don't like it, that's up to you. I like it from time to time. And I was talking about Mike McCarthy because here's what's interesting. He is 41 and 25 as the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. That is a 60.1 winning percentage as the coach of the Dallas Cowboys. The only losing season he had was 2020 where he lost Dak Prescott and we had freaking Andy Dalton and Cooper Rush actually playing quarterback. And Ben DiNucci for a game. And fortunately, we were in the position we were because if we hadn't been, we wouldn't have gotten Micah Parsons. To put this in perspective, Jimmy Johnson's win percentage in his career is 5-6-2. He's got a better win percentage than Jimmy Johnson. Tom Landry, coach of the Dallas Cowboys forever, has the exact same one at Six zero point one. If the Cowboys win tomorrow, it'll be forty two and twenty five, and it'll tick up just a little bit, which means he'll have a bigger winning percentage 
than Tom Landry did. You'll have three years of 12 and 5. I'm not sure, but I think, unless Kansas City has better in between there, I think the Cowboys over the last four years have the best, uh, definitely the last three. But I think over four years that he's been the coach, I think the Dallas Cowboys actually have the best record in football. I, I might be wrong. I think definitely the last three, where it's 12 and 5, 12 and 5, 12 and 5, if we win tomorrow. And I see Adam Scheffner puts out this one. Um, let me read it. Insider Mike McCarthy. Insider says Mike McCarthy's future will depend on Dallas' final game. Coming off back-to-back playoff losses defined by some baffling coaching decisions, Dallas Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy is under as much pressure as anyone going into the postseason. Per Adam Schefter. Ah, there we go. There's a belief or there's a belief around the NFL that McCarthy's future will be tied to how the Cowboys' final game goes. If the Cowboys play well in the postseason, Schefter wrote, McCarthy will have an excellent chance to keep his job. But if they struggle and end the season with an embarrassing loss, as happened in each of the past two years, then some say change could come to Dallas. If the Cowboys have another loss of playoffs, it won't be a surprise if Jerry Jones uh, decides to move on from Mike McCarthy. So here's what I want you to understand. Insider, insider Adam Scheffner has done a whole lot of talking but doesn't really have anything to back it up. Key things to listen to when you read things and all that. And I try to I, I try to get legitimate stories, but you know, this is where it's kind of like, come on, seriously, Adam. This was like uh when you said that the Packers, you know, were 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 ready to move on from Aaron Rodgers and stuff the day of the draft. And everybody's like, did you get to know this is just what you know we we put together it was bullshit. But he says If the Cowboys have another ugly loss in the playoffs, it won't be a surprise. It won't be a surprise. As opposed to the Cowboys are planning on moving on. If it is where it's like, you've actually talked to somebody in here. This whole thing is bullshit. It's bullshit. It won't be a surprise if Jerry Jones decides to move on. Um, Move on to what? Move on to what? That's my question. Because, you know, I don't know who would be the head coach. I don't know who you hire. Um, I mean, I guess some people would say that um, Bill Belichick is going to probably be gone in New England and it should bring him here. Um as the coach but the last few years you look at some of the drafting that they've done and the personnel decisions that they've made and so on um you look at that and say maybe some of the shine has worn off bill belichick much as it had for tom landry remember that people wanted us to get uh uh damn uh urban meyer we saw how that worked out in Jacksonville. Uh, people wanted us to get Josh McDaniels, you know, for his second stint. Thank God we didn't do that one because he was just as big a disaster the second time as he was the first time. Um, I don't know how you put him on the hot seat when you look at what he's been able to do with Dak Prescott as opposed to Kellen Moore. That... The last three years of the Dallas Cowboys, consistently wise, has been the best time since the 90s. We're not typically winning 12 and 5 seasons. 
uh, if we end up winning the division again, this is kind of a surprise. I mean, you talk about, you know, the Eagles, which were in the Super Bowl last year. You beat that team, and you may end up being the number two seed in the NFL. Now, I guess, you know, it wouldn't be a surprise if the Cowboys in the first round are playing, you know, Green Bay, and Green Bay comes in and beats them 50 to nothing. That might be an emotional firing there, maybe. But to think that this is breaking news, I think that may be the case with just about any coach if that happens. So we'll see. Um, What I will say is, I will say, when you look at our postseasons, for the most part, with Jason Garrett and then with Kellen Moore, Kellen Moore being the play caller of the last two debacles, that we had it seems like when it comes crunch time because you think about the three years of eight and eight where literally if we win the last game of the season we're in the playoffs and we failed all three years it seems like when it got to be crunch time jason garrett's sphincter muscle would just tighten up and they'd lose it when you looked at the two years of playoffs against the 49ers It feels like the game has been called differently. Things that we would do um, that worked all season, we didn't do in the postseason. Things like 12 personnel, things like moving the pocket and getting Dak Prescott out, outside, you know, throwing on the go, um, using um, 12 personnel, and um, using hurry-up offense that we just kind of got to be predictable And then, of course, we end up having injuries where we lose Tony Pollard. I will say going into this year, we are healthier than we've been, provided we come through the commander's game unscathed. If they can get that win, have some games at home, I think they can be successful. But we'll have to wait and see how that all works. We're going to – I'm going to get this thing wound down. Um, I've got a bunch of things I have to do uh, to get ready for tomorrow. I got to pick up, you know, 80 pounds of chicken wings and the big subs and, and get all that stuff packed up and ready to go. And things. shout out to David Wiley coming by last night and taking care of the potato salad and the beans and things and, uh, taking some of the stress off me, but let's listen in to get up. I'm going to run bland. All this talk about the Cowboys having a let down. No, sir. He gets a pick six. It's been a, it's been a few weeks. Time is ticking and it's due. For him to get another one. I'm going to run Bland pick six against the commanders to keep stamping being on that all pro list. Okay, so we talked about this game a little bit earlier this morning and how, look, this is the one the Cowboys, they've been given a gift on a silver platter. They can't blow it. So we, we all understand what's at stake for them. We know historically this is a spot that they have stumbled but let's talk about something different. Cares about I want to go back to the beginning of the season. <laughs> you were sitting in that seat with me yeah. and you said to me, Greeny, this is not about anything for Dak Prescott this year, but moments. Yes, this is about him getting it done. There's a part of me that feels like if not this year, then when? He's had the best season of his career. He's on the verge of having the two seed, which is the best path he's had since he was a rookie. Yep. Is this the year Dak gets it done? This is a seminal moment for Dak. And this is if, if, if we're asking just about Dak, yes. The way he's playing, the level that he's playing, Now, the rest of the team, based on the San Francisco 49ers, Mm -hmm. but if it comes down to quarterback play, there is no one I'm more confident in in the NFC than Dak Prescott going into these playoffs. So let me put it this way. If there is a morning that we are all in here talking about the Cowboys season ending in the playoffs, what you're telling me is we are not going to be saying it It was because because of of Dak. Dak Prescott. It will not be because of Dak Prescott. And the reason why I believe that is because I I said this to you too, G, as we watch this season go along, Mike T and and DG, he, Dak seems like he threw the caution to the wind this year. It seems like the the politically correctiveness of his pressers talking about, he said, y'all deemed us what something. Remember after San Francisco game, y'all had us this. We got to go back to work and get it done. We've seen him in adverse situations respond. And I know the schedule, people have talked about who they played. You play who on the schedule. Mm -hmm. And you play at a certain level. He's played at the highest level in the NFC at the most important position 
the majority of the season. So I, I think this is his best chance from the way he's playing and performing. And I think, you know, sorry, I, I just think that, like the confidence and the command, like you see from Absolutely. him, when you, when you watch him, when you listen to him this year, it just sounds different. different. And everything they told us would happen has happened, right? McCarthy takes control of the offense. We were skeptical. Would that work? It mm-hmm. has. It, it has made Dak more comfortable and more confident. McCarthy yep. seems like... I bet, you know, the other night notwithstanding, it seems like a better, you know, sort of yeah. in-game manager because of the, uh, calling the plays and all that. So all that stuff has happened. The question is, how far can they take it? Absolutely. Guys, in team sport, the definition of greatness is making those around you better. And I want to go back to a loss. They're playing the Miami Dolphins, and their right tackle is cutting one pass rusher free after the next screen. Nice. And these guys are draped on Dak Prescott, Bradley Chubb, Christian Wilkins. Mm-hmm. And he's keeping them in the game. Yeah. That's greatness. Now, ironically, that wasn't a loss, but that's the Dak Prescott we're seeing yeah. in 2023. All right, and I, gentlemen, this, this show has been magnificent so far, but it is about to get much, much better. Oh, here we go. I present for your viewing pleasure the one, the only, Mr. Ryan Clark, oh. who is up with us from the Uh-oh, here we go. Man there. Where that man at? He threw, he threw a lot of ESPN under the bus. Driving across country, three oh, generations of Clarks. Taking the sun. Driving his son and his dad. <laughs> yes, sir. In the car. Oh, yeah. You you got pops too with you? Yes, sir. <laughs> See, that's so funny. You guys think that sounds great. That sounds like my worst nightmare. <laughs> that's like a reality show. Like there should be a camera in that car. Having said all that, RC, you jumped in at a perfect time. We're talking about Dak yeah. Prescott, America's favorite topic. Marcus just said he is extremely confident that there will not be a morning that we come in here in the next six weeks on Get Up and say that the Cowboys lost because Dak Prescott didn't get it done. Are you equally confident in that? Go, going into these playoffs right now, you may take you'll take Lamar Jackson, you may take Patrick Mahomes because of history. But right after that, Dak Prescott is the quarterback you want. When you look at the way that Dak has played this year, the way that he's carried the Dallas Cowboys, there's no quarterback playing better. When Aaron Rodgers said it weeks ago that Dak was one of his favorite quarterbacks to watch, it's because of the way he's maneuvering within the position and within leadership. I love what Marcus said about his post-game pressers. I love the way that Dan said everything just sounds different and Mike Tannenbaum pointed out a loss because no longer are we walking into the, to games for the Dallas Cowboys saying if Dak does this because the entire year Dak has done that. When you look yeah. at the difference in him from the San Francisco 49er game on throughout the rest of the season he was playing at not just an MVP level he was playing at an elite level a level that we always question could Dak Prescott get to? The Josh Allens, the Patrick Mahomes, the Lamar Jacksons. Well, he's there right now. And so now it's going to be about what the rest of the team does. Because we won't walk in here on one Monday and say to ourselves that Dak Prescott was the reason that the Dallas Cowboys lost. They now win because of him. There I think you that's go. right. And, yeah. and if, I mean, that's a big moment one way or the other. Remember a year ago, right? Why is he throwing all these interceptions? Like, right. what is going on? He had a broken thumb. This is not his history. Hey, look, this year he's got eight. Three of them were in the San Francisco game where they were behind by 100 in the see, first see, quarter. Here's, here's, like, here's, like, let, me, mean, let, me, let, me, let me get my flowers. I'm, I got to get my own flowers. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Remember this conversation we was having about Kellen Moore last year? Yeah. And all y'all was like, well, they're the number one scoring offense oh, in the league. It, and they, it, it, bang, bang, bang. It's an efficient way to play football. And Dak understood, in order for me to get the most out of myself, this is going to have to be an effort of everybody around me. You go out and get Brandon Cooks, who's starting to ascend now and be a playmaker. But the most important thing Mike McCarthy did for Dak Prescott, I feel like, was went and sat down in a room and said, "What? how do you like to play quarterback? How do you like to play this position? What do we need around you in order for you to be at your best? And you see that take hold. He said, I need a tight end. Jake Ferguson started to ascend. I need multiplicity at the line of scrimmage. I need to be able to walk up and say, get out of this and let's get into this play. And if you listen to Mike McCarthy all season long for as much as he's been killed, because, you know, we want to fire a coach for the Cowboys every year when right. something don't go right. If you listen to what Mike McCarthy said in the offseason, which is why I w- didn't have this visceral reaction to him taking over play calling, it was because he was going to put it in four his hands. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make this about you. The other thing that will happen is one morning on Get Up, we will say Dak Prescott is now the highest paid football player oh, yeah. in the history of the NFL. That's NFL. coming. That's true. Yep. That will happen too. Coming up here. Did okay, you- there you go. All right, good people. 
we got work to do to get ready for tomorrow. I can't believe that we're already here at week number 18 in the NFL season. It takes too long to get here, and it takes, uh, it just goes so fast. All right, good people. We will be seeing you real soon. And Philly, little Philly, little Philly. I suspected yet? Does this defense have any heart? Let's no. Go. They suck. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Caleb Carter? It's like, they shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't. Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <sighs> Kayla Carter? It's like, they shit on you. Kill them. Oh, my goodness. Did he say they, they cock it on them? I hate the style of defense. I